Hey guys, admit if you've ever wanted to fire an Italian firearm, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Guys, like and comment. The comment section is out of control, so get it. <laughs> Find out why it's the best part of YouTube. Now, this channel is sponsored by Brown Owls. Brown Owls bringing you awesome 2A stuff. Go check out their website. Great stuff in there. And we also have to thank them for, of course, donating money to the FPC. Big 2A advocates, go help them out for supporting this channel. Now, the sponsors for this particular video, we have Scallywag Tactical, 15% off with discount code Grantham. And of course, the Sonoran Desert Institute to learn gunsmithing. A big thank you to them, ladies gentlemen my often forgotten but most certainly not by me and 250 cals welcome to the channel today we're going to be talking about a very cool firearm and that is going to be the beretta uh, arx 160 with the accompanying glx 160 as well this is not a 22 this is the exact service rifle that you see being used by italian forces all around. Now, funny enough, I just got done not too long ago working with some really great guys um, from Italy from a certain unit. So we have to give them a quick shout out, a big shout out to you guys out there. Thanks for uh, all the support and for being cool. So with that being said, um, we're going to get into this rifle. We're going to talk a little bit about it. Before we do, we're going to do what we always do. Full disclosure. What is my relationship with Beretta and, uh, you know, all that? Uh, Beretta doesn't know who I am, and the ammunition is provided for by me. So, big thank you to Beretta for that. But in any case, let's talk about this rifle. Now, this is pretty interesting because there is pretty extensive use of polymer in this particular weapon. So, you have to realize that this weapon was designed around 2008, 2009, and it came into use with Italian forces shortly thereafter. Um, and so, kind of befitting of the time, you have a heavy use of polymer. Now, there's a lot of European service weapons out there, and they're kind of similar in a lot of respects. A lot, Most of them are short stroke gas piston operated with cold hammer forged barrels, and the Beretta ARX-160 is no different from a lot of those. Now, that being said, I think a lot of people end up sleeping on the ARX-160 because it's kind of a goofy looking fish gun. It looks a little bit like a fish, and that's okay. But there's still a lot to be said about how good it is in my opinion. There's a lot of really good things that elevate it above other European service rifles, in my opinion. So let's go ahead and let's get into this. We're going to go, as the Marines love it, tip to butt, and figure out what makes this gun what it is. All right, so starting from the tip here. So we have a pretty conservative, pretty conventional A2 birdcage flash hider. That's pretty standard through most armed forces. They do pretty well. And then, of course, they're going to be closed off at the bottom. That way, when you're firing prone, you're not kicking up dust. You have to realize that these weapons are made for the greater armed forces. It's not so much about uh, mounting suppressors and that type of stuff. And so as a result, the A2 is perfectly acceptable. Now, of course, these can easily be removed, and we can replace this with whatever muzzle device we want, whatever suppressor we want, which brings us over to the gas setting. So we do have a short stroke piston system, and this can be adjusted depending on what type of muzzle device you're running, whether it's a without a suppressor or with a suppressor. Now, that also brings us to our barrel. So the barrel is really interesting in my opinion. Most European countries are using cold hammer forged barrels. Not that this is a new concept, but uh, you know the American military, for example, does not in many of their weapon systems. And there's a lot of very good things to be said about a cold hammer forged system. They have, without a doubt, greater longevity, especially over sustained fire. So it's because of that, that the cold hammer forged barrel is certainly more expensive to manufacture, but it's also a really good thing to have in a service rifle. Now, with the short stroke gas piston system, it's quite interesting because on this particular system, the, the amount of length that it travels when it's going back is quite far compared to most short stroke piston systems. And the idea being that they kind of smooth out the recoil on the Beretta ARX 160. Now, in practice, I think that it feels pretty similar to like an HK416. It has very much so the same recoil pattern, especially when you're shooting it. So when you're looking through a dot on a 416, you fire that thing. That thing, typically, if you're right-handed, is going to jump a little bit up and to the left just due to how the operation works and with an A2 flash hider. And you see much the same thing on the ARX-160, and that's not to say that it's a harsh recoiling rifle, but rather that it, I think, despite that really long piston system, 
does end up having a very similar recoil pattern. But talk is cheap and shooting is much funner, more fun, same thing. So we're gonna do a quick demonstration and we'll show you a little bit of the recoil pattern on the Breda ARX160. So we're gonna shoot this in single shot, just so you can see what the recoil pattern is like. All right. So a pretty gentle recoil impulse, as you can see, very similar to the HK416, and just a very, what can't be stated enough, reliable system. Um, and all the time that we've used it, this thing has just been awesome. And, and unfortunately, we haven't been able to put a whole lot of rounds through it. I think maybe we did about 800 or so today. And I wish I could have more time on it, but you know, all things being considered, I'm happy that I'm at least able to talk about it. But if you really want to look into it, you can go into the Italian military trials and they put this thing quite through the ringer. So this is a very reliable system. Now, going from there, I want to talk a little bit about the GLX-160. So this is the accompanying grenade launcher that uh, accompanies these rifles. And it's one of the weirdest designs I've ever seen. So if you come in and take a look at it right here, compared to like an M203 or an HK, the, you know, the M320, uh, to unlock it, it's these little plastic tabs right here, and you actually push down on it, and then it unlocks the system, and it does have an automatic ejector, but it's very bizarre. I, I've never seen a grenade launcher quite like it. Now, in this case, of course, we don't have any rounds in there. We have the safety right there, which is improved over the M203, but the uh, trigger is horrendous on this thing, so we're going to ghost that trigger right now, but if we have a empty mag in there you can see how far back and how jesus how heavy that thing is like there's just a whole lot of force necessary to fire that grenade launcher um i think it's an unnecessary trigger pull and i'm sure it comes down to the mechanism and i'm also sure it's a very safe design but i think certainly other grenade launchers eclipse it in terms of trigger and i'm sure its accuracy is absolutely phenomenal but that being said i can understand making their own grenade launcher because you gotta have something that has the fish vibes you know this definitely has the fish vibes another quick note is when i first worked with the italians uh they asked us what our service weapon was i was like the m9 they're like who makes it and i was like beretta and they're like beretta beretta i don't know that always cracked me up and then they called me gay in their own language which i think is frocho or something like that. I'm sure the Italians will get super pissed about that one or laugh or whatever, but good dudes. So going from there, we of course have the handguard on the ARX-160. So right here, of course, we have the accessory rails on it and we have a Arasaka light. But I think the thing that kind of irks a lot of people is how thick this is, unnecessarily large. And there's good and there's bad behind it. The bad about it, of course, is compared to, you know, your th slim BCM rails. A lot of people are kind of disappointed in their ability to kind of firmly grasp around it. But at the same time, the larger rail does allow for pretty good circulation of air. It's going to be a little bit longer before it heats up because it's further away from the barrel. So there are certainly things to be said about it. And the one thing I can say is that we were dumping pretty hard on this thing. <laughs> we were firing a lot of rounds through it and uh, almost got killed by B. And in all that time, there isn't uh, any time where it got so hot that I wasn't able to hold it. So that's something that I can certainly say that was good for the ARX-160. Of course, we have the iron sights on the ARX-160. So completely serviceable, definitely bizarre compared to the types of iron sights that we're used to in the United States, but certainly serviceable. And most of these weapons are, of course, coming with optics. But backup sights are good and they do fold down and out of the way, which is nice. Now, as far as the top optic rail is concerned, it is continuous. So there is no part point along this rail where you're gonna lose your zero. So whether you have a peck or an optic, wherever you have to mount that optic, you're not gonna lose zero on that. So that is something that is go going to be, of course, beneficial uh, when it comes to a military type weapon. And I think this is where we get to a really kind of interesting stuff when it comes to the ARX-160 because this is very much so a very user serviceable rifle where you can change a lot on it um, just on the fly. Now, how useful is that? I don't know, but you can certainly change this 
as quick as you need to. So for example, the charging handle, I personally like having a charging handle on the left-hand side because it's nice to be able to do whatever, I need, do whatever I need to do as far as clearing malfunctions. I just like that functionality. So on this particular build, if you want to swap that, you just pull it down to this indexing point right here. And then as I get that lined up, you pop it out and you can push it through. And then that comes to the other side. Then we can simply pop it back into place and now we have it on the right side. And that's also true as far as changing the ejection pattern that can easily be changed to the left or the right hand side with a simple push. So there are some very good and very interesting things about the 160. Now the question is like how often are you going to need to eat, how often are you going to need to switch over, you know, which side your brass is ejecting? Probably not that often, probably not as important to have it as serviceable as it is on this, but you can certainly appreciate the amount of engineering and thought that went into this weapon. If you come back from here, we see shell deflectors on either side. Again, this is a completely ambidextrous weapon, which also brings us over to our controls. So on the safety selector, it is a little short um, as far as being able to actuate it very well, but we have our safe, we have of course have from safe to fire and then to full auto at that point. And if you go over to the other side, that's of course from safe to fire to full auto. And speaking of full auto, we of course have to put a mag through on full auto because you know what? This is America and you guys want to see that type of stuff. So we're going to put our iPro on, get our ears on. And one thing to pay attention to is going to be how controllable this weapon is on full auto. Get that push over. course as you can see right there we now have the bolt locked back so these weapons do lock back on the last round and if you need to load a new round in so once we have our in this case we'll pretend a full magazine actually might as well do it so we take a full magazine we insert it in and there are several different ways we can then get the weapon loaded we can either rack the charging handle right there pull that back that will load it or we can also just drop the bolt like we are going to do right here that will drop the bolt. So there are a couple different ways to do that. And if we need to lock that bolt back, check that round out. We can go ahead and we can push up on that bolt release and lock that back, much like a AR M16. Now there are of course differences for people who are really used to the M16 M4 type system. The magazine release and the bolt release are in slightly different locations, almost in a G36 like location, especially when it comes to the bolt release. So you can drop it with your finger or conversely, what I've ended up doing a lot is after I load it in, I'll just use my finger right there to drop that bolt right there. Now, magazine release is a little bit higher than what you see on the M4, but again, works fine. I haven't really had any issues with it other than me just having to get used to it. The grip is kind of odd and it's almost like an A2 with this little nub right there. It's, it's not wonderful, but it's certainly very serviceable. I'm, I'm not gonna complain too much about it. I'm sure that it's easy to swap out lowers where this isn't really an issue, but as far as a service rifle is concerned and firing from the prone, it's very serviceable. And speaking of serviceable, the trigger is actually quite excellent. So what we're gonna do for the first time ever on Grand Thumb, we're gonna ghost an Italian rifle's trigger right here. So got that locked back so first off you know seeing a full polymer trigger trigger like this yeah i'm not really expecting much but as you can see right here pulling into it we hit just immediate wall and an immediate let off so let's feel that reset very short reset and that's a pretty good military trigger that feels maybe five pounds probably a little bit less um for a military trigger that's incredible. And a lot of people were telling me on these Berettas that the triggers were pretty terrible and like G36 type level. I disagree completely. This is a extremely well-made trigger. And especially on a service rifle, I can't say enough good things about it. Um, they definitely just, just feels good. Just a good weapon. You know, they're not as smooth or perhaps as refined as like some of our you know Gucci ARs out there, but as far as a service rifle is concerned, um, this is a really well-built rifle. Um, 
I honestly did not think I would like this as much as I ended up liking this in the short amount of time that I shot it, but they really put a lot of thought into it. And I know a lot of Italians aren't huge fans of this weapon, but I can't say enough good things about how wonderful the trigger is and um, the overall recoil impulse that I'm feeling from it. So if you have the chance to kind of get your hands on, an, on a Beretta ARX 160, absolutely. It is a really cool rifle. So we go back to the butt sock right here. So we have our fishtail, gives it that fish look. Uh, if we pull back on this right here, we can go ahead and we can adjust that. We have a couple adjustment points to kind of accommodate body armor or what have you. So again, they did good things as far as the adjustments are concerned. You can see it right on the bottom here on where it's locking in. So it comes down to this is well built. Now, the only kind of gripe I have on the 160 personally is the barrel is a little bit thin. And the idea being that with a thicker barrel, it's going to be able to accommodate and resist heat. Because as these barrels heat up, you're gonna to begin to have that zero wander and possibly some degradation, degradation of accuracy. But that being said, in the time that we shot it, of course, we didn't shoot it very far today, maybe 120, but it did very well. And so I have to give a shout out to uh, Nine Hole Reviews. He did a pretty good video shooting this thing out to about 500 yards and he didn't see any degradation of accuracy. He wasn't shooting a whole ton, about 20 or 30 rounds, but it should be noted that this weapon is performing well for the purpose for which it was intended. So I don't really expect to see a whole lot of degradation unless you're just really dumping on this guy. So that's kind of the only thing I have to say about it as far as it being fat and stuff. Again, everything has a purpose. So if you can get your hands on this, I can't recommend it enough. It is a very cool weapon. And again, unexpected that I would like it so much, but here we are with the ARX-160, just, just loving life, guys. So get out there, get your hands on it. But here's the thing, if you don't train, it's not gonna matter what weapon you have. So make sure that you get training. Tons of great guys to get training from. We, of course, had Bear Solutions, Cogworks, um, Haley Strategic. We have Core Vision. Tons of great guys out there willing to give you knowledge so that you can get better with your weapon. So make sure you get out there. Guys, do a good deed. Make sure you stay tuned. We have tons of great videos coming. I've got nothing else for you. Final thing for you guys, make sure you unplug. Get away from your phones. Get outside. It's good for you. Now, before we go, I want to get my buddy Jason on and thank him for allowing us to do a review on the Beretta ARX-160. So this is your weapon. Um, take a second. You can talk about your business. Um, we can't thank you enough for uh, supporting the channel this Thanks entire having. time, of course. Um, you know, he's also the man at the HKs and the MP7s. Lots of cool stuff that we've gotten to do over the years. So can't thank you enough. But here, man, go ahead and uh, talk a little bit about your company. Um, Hurricane Butterfly. We do import and export. That's um, such an understatement, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want to let you give these people a little bit of dad advice before we go. You know. you know, as a dad myself, yeah. uh, it's advice that my dad gave to me, uh, which is love the one that loves you. Uh, listen, listen to what they say. It applies to men or women. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, young, young soldiers, young Marines, yeah. young airmen, or, or even if you're older, uh, male or female. Listen, listen to what they say. Love the one that loves you. Look at their actions. Uh, do their actions match their words? Um, if they don't, then, then that gives you something to think about. Dang, that was actually really good. Jason, thank you so much for all the support over the years, man. You're very welcome. Good to have you on. And of course, we'll be seeing more of Jason in the future. Probably not, because we won't associate with him. Guys, thank you so much. Appreciate you guys. Love you. Take care of it.